Welcome back everyone to some more Williams Road to Glory here today and this of course is round 6 of season 2 for the Spanish Grand Prix and as you guys know the European season often means big upgrades so hopefully we can try and take a big step forward over the next few races of course and Spain is one of those tracks that is kind of an indicator as to where you know the pace really is so we're going to see how we stack up in the shuffle but first of all guys I want to plug the most recent episode at Zandvoort we had a battle with the home hero Max Verstappen and it was a really really decent episode and a decent race if you haven't seen it it was pretty historic so go check it out I'll leave a link up in the top right hand corner of the screen but but today we're at Spain it's a different track different set of conditions different set of parameters and it's going to be interesting so let's jump into it if you guys are going to enjoy the episode as always leave a like it really helps me out let's try and hit 1100 likes on this one and subscribe for more we should hit 59,000 today and then we're not too far from 60,000 guys so um, a big big you know like plead and just a favor for me if you are into the channel please hit the red subscribe button and uh, yeah let's get into it so here we are then we jump into the race weekend and we look at the weather forecast first of all it's dry conditions which is great we then look at the progression chart and you can see most teams not really bringing that many upgrades it's mainly the lower midfield teams so Renault, Alfa Tauri, um, ourselves, Alfa Romeo and Haas all bringing upgrades this weekend and we close the gap to the teams ahead we've got two more minor upgrades on the way as well and that's going to help really close the gap to Renault and McLaren up ahead and uh, fingers crossed we can try and keep improving because you know so far we've been doing a good job with the upgrades and we've brought one I believe to every single race this season so far so I'm hoping we can continue that trend and keep pushing forward we've also scored points in every single race this season so far of course in the last race Zandvoort picking up the race win um, you know we've got ourselves right back in the mix and in control of you know this championship and how things are going in season two after practice though we scored pretty much 800 points which is decent enough and we're going to carry that momentum into qualifying now um, based off a of practice that I will admit the pace seems a little bit off at least to qualify in one lap of pace you know uh, we seem to be kind of you know brought back down to earth a little bit around here a bit of a reality check in many ways and it seems like we are lacking a bit of pace and even to our teammate actually George Russell um, seemingly quite quick this weekend so we moved to Q1 you can see here currently I'm on my first time lap getting a bit of oversteer out of the hairpin but in general this was actually quite a strong and good bank lap you know one that I was really happy with um, heading through the end of the lap now you see a bit more oversteer again though and the lap did kind of fall apart towards the very end but in general the pace was good and it was a clean enough lap the first two sectors were great um, across the line we go though we're going to go P15 so right on the cutoff behind George Russell with a, th a 14.3 so not particularly insane lap but still good enough we then move on to my final lap in Q1 and we are currently 16th so this lap you know it's, it has to be perfect the pressure's on so we're going to go for a full lap of Spain currently 16th we need to try and get out of the elimination zone so let's see how it goes and fingers crossed this lap will be good enough to get out so let's jump into it and let's go for a full sound effect lap around Catalonia.
Here we go then, running up to the line. We improve by three tenths of a second and we go P14, so we get out of the drop zone with a big lap. We find three tenths in the final sector, but unfortunately, everybody else improved, including Lance Stroll and George Russell. And our teammate, George, knocks us out of qualifying one and qualifying in general for the Spanish Grand Prix. So George Russell with a big performance here today and fair play to him, you know, Finally, it looks like George is starting to find some pace and he's starting to step up a little bit. So, yeah, George Russell with a big performance in qualifying and he out-qualifies us here today. And we're out in Q1, so that's the end of our session. So, a bit of a surprise, but then again, you know, I'll accept it if it's my own teammate knocking me out. But in terms of the rivalry breakdown, Albon does pick up a few extra points, which is not ideal. And uh, he's looking on course to wrap this one up. Either way, we're going to try and fight back as we jump into the race here for round six for the Spanish Grand Prix. Welcome along then to what promises to be another fascinating Spanish Grand Prix. A race which saw Max Verstappen win on his first ever appearance with the Red Bull team in 2016. This after the dramatic coming together of Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg on the first lap. Will we see more moments for the scrapbook here today? The Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya, a track that will certainly force the drivers to push themselves. It consists of a very impressive main straight going into turn one. It's a straight that also offers a DRS zone, so it's likely to be a hot spot for overtakes. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he starts from pole position. And Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Albon, Pierre Gasly and Leclerc, Vettel, Kvyat, Ricardo, and Carlos Sainz, Perez, Norris, Lance Stroll and Ocon, Russell, Martinez, Antonio Giovinazzi and Kevin Magnussen, Grosjean and Nobuharu Matsushita. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Well then, here we are for the race at Spain and as you can see to my left hand side, George Russell managed P15 in Q2, so in the end it wasn't ideal, and I was hoping maybe George might have scraped the P14-13, but in the end we're going to start alongside each other here on the, I believe, the eighth row of the grid. Now in terms of the strategy, you might be able to see if you peek over the chassis a little bit of white, and that's because I'm going to take a gamble and start the race on the hard compound tyre. It's not something I usually do because a rule of thumb for racing, you know, league racing as well, this, is, this also applies. If you start on the hard tyre and it's a one-stop race, if you get wing damage or hurt your car at turn one, you haven't got another set of hard tires to go back onto, so you're going to have to at least two stop, if not three stop. So you want to try and save a set of hards, ideally for later on. But for this one, I'm going to take the risk and hope it pays off. So medium is going to be the, the second option here today, later on in the race. So hard to medium tire strategy. And uh, we're going to go for 0.4 fuel, not too heavy. I want to be a little bit on the lighter side to kind of compensate for those hard compound tires. And um, we're going to see if we can try and get to the points. I feel like it's all going to depend on how the first in pans out. If we can stay on the page, stay within DRS, maybe make an overtake or two, and then try and get a long overcut, then maybe we've got a chance. But it's going to be tricky, and we're going to have to work for it. So let's jump into it, and let's see if we can try and improve on this P16 here today for the Spanish Grand Prix. Okay, here we go. Let's see how this goes. Starting the race on the hard tire, something I've not done in a while. Last well, start, here we go. Well, that's a good start. I'm happy with that. We got away really well there. Great traction. Great second phase. Down towards turn one we go. I'm going to try and go late on the brakes here to see if I can stay ahead of the Alpha here on my left. That's uh, Giovinazzi, it looks like. We're going to be on the inside for turn three. Giovinazzi going the long way around. We're going to stay side by side, wheel to wheel with the Italian. We're going to outbreak him though. And there we go. We pick up our starting place of P16 once again. So crucially, Staying ahead of the Alphas and the Haskars. We're going to put our car right in the middle of the track here to us just to avoid being overtaken. I think we're going to be on the back foot quite badly at the start on these tyres. And it's going to be about surviving and trying to stay on the pace, especially the first two laps because when the AI use all of their ERS, we're going to have to try and stay in the mix. But then once DRS gets enabled, that could be decent for us. I would go for the move here, but I'm going to wait. I don't want to ruin George's race. I'm going to give him the chance, considering he's on mediums. I want to let him kind of lead the charge for now. 
see how he gets on. There's no point in me just going for a reckless dive for then him just to be, you know, all over the back of me basically for the next few laps. So let's see if um, we can sell into a race pace and hopefully George can try and lead the fight for us. But for the first time this season, I'm behind George Russell at the end of lap one, which doesn't happen too often. So let's see how it goes. So far, George Russell, I'd say, has been a little bit disappointing with his race pace. He's just about hanging on to Arcon ahead in the uh, Renault Alpine, of course, up ahead in for the DRS. But I feel like I could maybe go a bit quicker than him right now. Let's see, though, if he can pick up his pace a little bit. I'll wait a couple more laps and then hopefully we'll start to have an advantage on tyres and we can try and make a move. So let's see how this goes. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to pass George. He just hasn't got the pace. He's now dropped out of the RS range of the cars ahead. So we've given it a chance. Seems like he was great at quality pace, but his race pace isn't quite there. So here we go. We're going to try and make this overtake. New personal best. I'm going to drain the battery to see if we can get by. I don't want to waste any time battling George. So on the outside we go. And there we go. Job done. Pete 15 and ahead of our teammate. Maybe we can drag him with us, you never know. We've dropped the Alphas and the Haas cars out of the RS range, so let's see if George can kind of run with me here, and uh, we'll try and reconnect to the cars ahead. Never mind, I've actually dropped George out of the RS range altogether within a lap. Another personal best. Seems like I've just got some strong pace, so this strategy could be good for us. I can see them battling down into turn one, so this is good. The race is opening up a little bit, but crucially I need to close up to the cars ahead though. That's really, really important for us. And there we go, another strong lap, and we're now within the DRS range of Esteban Arcon. It's just going to miss out on a personal best. Actually, no, we are going to get a new personal best. There we go. Plenty of cars in the pit lane as well, as uh, those on a two-stop strategy make their early stops. I wonder, could I go for the move into the hairpin here? Do we have enough? Going to drain the ERS. Down the inside we go. It's a huge dive bomb. Arcon with a cut back though. We're still there and we're through. Nice. What an absolute missile torpedo send that was. But we've got the move done. Shout out Danny Kofiat for that one. We're now P8 behind both Racing Point Aston Martin cars. So let's see if we can make some more progress here. Is there anyone else, and anyone else in the pit lane? Looks like we've got Leclerc and Gasly in. So we're now P6 in this race. Okay, this strategy is working well for us. This could have good potential. If we can clear both of these Astons, we're going to be in pretty good shape. Just stuck in a bit of a DRS train at the moment. Can't really get close enough to stroll to really line up a move. Having said that, I'm a little bit closer through here. Let's see if we can stay nice and tight and maybe make a move out the final corner down towards turn one here. This is the closest I've been through this entire end of the lap section. Going to short shift my way out of here. Easy on the rear traction. There we go. Okay, this is nice. This is the closest I've been. This could be the one here. We're going to use all the battery we have to get this moved on. Look at this. We're barely making a scratch on the straight, though. Stroll locks up. Oh, I just can't get through, though. That's a real shame. So we're literally dead equal in terms of straight line speed with the racing point, which is not ideal. Oh. Okay, some information on hmm. signs. They are out of the race. A new strategy is available hmm. on the MFD. That's a really interesting one, that one. That's really scrambled my plans in terms of race strategy. I don't know what to do with that. Do I pit or do I stay out and commit to the strategy? Hmm. I can't even go soft, soft. It's too far to go. I think I'm going to stay out. I think I'm going to go long. I'm going to commit to the original strategy. Yeah, racing point are going to stack, they're going to lose a lot of time. Make sure I don't speed, I don't want to break the delta. Cross the start finish. Yeah, we'll go P3. We're snapping the bot, are still out there on softs. The the oh, never mind, they've actually rejoined on soft tyres, so they're well ahead. They've benefited from the safety car delta. So, um, yeah, we've been at P3. We'll have all the fast guys behind us on fresher mediums. But this could be a good thing for us, this strategy. I feel like... Everyone still has one stop left on paper. So this is a net position right now. The question is, can we hold it? You know, if we can hold this, this will work. So basically, we've, got, we've just got to try and stay with the fast cars and the fast guys as long as possible. The longer we stay with them, the better our race. Because we'll, you know, naturally, just by running at a higher pace, keeping up with these guys, we'll start pulling away from the midfield, the lower midfield and all those guys. So I like this. We're, we're going to stick to this. It's going to be fine. Okay, safety cars coming in this lap. 
So we're gonna have to get ready for the restart here. I'm trying to get a bit of last minute temperature in my tires before we get underway. It's not gonna be great temperature, but it should be enough. Hopefully we can warm up on the straight. Here we go. Oh, struggling for a bit of rear traction through there. On the way we go. We're gonna just drain the battery to keep the pace up. Okay, looks like we're gonna be okay. Green flag, so we can relax. All right, let's see how long we can keep the faster cars behind us. We're snapping and bottles ahead on brand new, fresh soft tires, I believe. And uh, they're, of course, gonna be up full, full power, so they're gonna be pretty damn quick. Hamilton, Gasly, and Co. behind. They're still on relatively fresh mediums. Here comes Hamilton down the inside. Can't really fight that. He's got a lot more grip than me, so fair enough. Okay, Gazzy though, I feel like I can keep him behind, so let's see. Let's try and keep the pace up here. It really helps that my final sector is very good. I'm able to pull out a bit of a gap and stay ahead of the cars behind. The RS now enabled though. So we'll see what happens here. At this point, we're not doing too badly. Pace is decent. We're stretching the pack behind a little bit. It's all opening up, so pace is good enough right now. We've got plenty of tyres left. I still feel pretty comfortable. I feel like I'm pretty quick anyway. So let's see how this goes. Personal best. This is good. Half race distance achieved. We're getting closer and closer to our pit stop window. I might try and stretch it by one more lap because, of course, we're going to benefit from that safety car. So we'll get probably one more lap out of these, which will just help make the final stint a lot easier. We can just push flat out, basically. Right now, we're under no threat. I've got plenty of ERS, so we're chilling. Another personal best, just trying to keep that pace up. I'm going to go silent now for a little while, see how the pace goes. I'll give you an update when something happens. Oh, okay. That was um, one of the mercs in the pits. I wasn't even looking, to be fair. George is coming in for his stop. That was Hamilton in the pit lane, which is quite early, actually, considering the safety car. So he's committing to his original strategy, as is George Russell. Okay, interesting. We'll see how that one pans out. And now Bottas, Gasly, Leclerc pit. So everyone's pitting quite early. That's interesting. This is my scheduled pit stop lap. I'm going to go one more lap. So we'll pit lap 21. We're stepping in the pit lane now for Red Bull. Looks like Norris is going to pit as well. Looks like everyone's pitting to be fair. So we're going to take the race lead for at least one lap. We're going to box this lap though. Understood. Stopping this lap. What an absolutely insane lap. Flying here. Bit of a mistake there, but that's okay. Just giving it everything we've got on this in-lap. As we're going to box the mediums, and we should have a tyre advantage over a lot of cars. I'm expecting the majority to be on the hard tyre, so... Let's see how this goes. You can see the engine wear icon. That's popped up now as well. As we go into the pit lane, we're going to stay to the inside of the bollard to keep it fair. Into the pit box. And there we go. Nice. Very good in-lap, pit entry, everything. First in, overall perfection. I'm really happy with that. Uh, both my left side of tyres on 62%, so about 14% more than the right side of ones. Into the pit box. There we go, 2.4. That's a good stop. Currently fourth place here. Going to give everything out of the pit box. Looks like we're going to rejoin the behind Pierre Gasly on mediums. But that is a net P6 for us out of the pits. So there you go. That was the correct decision on the strategy. Staying out during the safety car and uh, just for you guys a bit of an engine wear update you can see we've got some wear going on now I've got the engine light kicking on on the bottom right it's on yellow now so we've got some wear but not too bad considering you know we've done no durability upgrades at all the actual engine wear is not too bad after like what this is now race number six of the season I believe so we'll probably run the engine again from Monaco and then after we'll probably get a change so everything's going pretty well so far Ricardo in the pits, and that is going to give us P5. Nice. If I could finish here, I'd be very happy. Well, that moment looks like we're in a bit of a train. gasly has got some good pace. I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Maybe he might run out of the ERS, possibly. We're trying to chase Hamilton down, who's up the road on hard tyres, but we don't quite have the pace to catch the Mercedes. So it's going to be a battle for P4. But uh, at the minute, it's Gasly, myself, Lando, and Leclerc, then there's a bit of a gap behind. So it's a four-car fight for fourth place. But at the minute, I can't see us doing anything. Gas is just a bit too quick for me to really get close enough. And we know about the Alpha Tower in a straight line speed, so it's a bit of a difficult one, this one. Gas is picking up his pace. He's dropping me out of the RS range. He's pretty close. I'm having to respond. Using everything I've got left to try and stay within a second of the Frenchman. Looks like they are using the ERS like they always do at the end of the race. 
So a bit of a pace change here, which I'm struggling to match. Oh, there we go. Gasly has now dropped me out of DRS range. I'm going to push now to see if I can drop Lando out of mine. Three laps to go. Okay, here we go. Last lap of the race now. Norris is going to get close, but I don't think he's close enough. And we're going to do a job here of holding on. There we go. Lovely. We stay ahead into the hairpin. And we hold on. Crucially, Verstappen wins the race and a fastest lap for him. And I believe that will be the championship lead being extended even further. For us, though, from P16 on the grid after a miserable qualifying and just struggling with one lap pace, even though the car felt great. Race strategy, 10 out of 10. Absolutely perfect. And we're going to come through the final corner and we are going to bring home P5 and some points again. Yes. Another Spanish Grand Prix is over, and what a special race it was. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive, and that's allowed them to take the advantage. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. Well then guys, there we go, it's official. Verstappen wins, Bottas second, Hamilton third. That's the podium here today, but crucially we finish P5 behind Pierre Gasly and pick up 10 more very strong World Championship points. Lando P6, Leclerc P7 ahead of Albon, Vettel and Ocon. Missing out in the top 10, we have Kafiat, Ricardo, Russell, Stroll, Perez, Giovinazzi, Magnussen, Matsushita, Grosjean, and then Sainz retiring in his home race here today. We look at the standings and we drop to fourth place as Valtteri overtakes us by one point. Verstappen clearly out front 36 points clear and well in control in p1 and then in the constructor standings we are currently fifth and just two points behind mclaren and alpha tauri so well well and truly still in the mix it's all still to play for and the next race is monaco so i'm very much excited about that so guys let's jump into the main menu and let's put more upgrades on and let's try and prepare for the next race at monaco you gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? Yeah, we did actually. And the strategy was really good. I think we, we made a good decision with the safety car. And also in general, the car felt great. You know, we had a really good car this weekend, especially in the race. I don't know why qualifying was so poor, but the car, you know, always felt good. And that's always a positive feeling. Your team must be ecstatic with how you're performing. I hope so. I think we're all pretty happy. You know, it's been six points finishes out of six now. So, yeah, we're just, you know, we're, we're trying to work hard and live up to expectations. Appreciate your time. Well, after the race, as you can see, we tie Albon. So three points apiece after that one. But it's looking like Alex will probably wrap up the rivalry. I mean, it's a good thing Monaco is the next race. It's going to give us a chance to hopefully, you know, pick up as many points as possible. But I feel like too little, too late, and then some marginal gains on the driver acclaim as well. We currently have 1,500 RD points exactly. We've got an upgrade planned on the 15th and then another one on the 20th. The next race, of course, is Monaco. We've got more RD points coming in on the 18th. So we're going to go ahead and put on one more upgrade now looking at what we have you can see on the aero we've got an upgrade on the way i am tempted to go on the chassis to be fair and go for a major one i feel like we're due a big push in terms of performance here now looking at the options it looks like the most effective one is going to be this one here for the monocoque restructure so we're going to go ahead and purchase this upgrade and that should hopefully arrive before the azerbaijan grand prix so that will leave us with three upgrades currently in the works you can see the difference in the bottom right if they all arrive we should be pretty close to renault alpine so yeah there's your lot we're now going to skip ahead to the monaco grand prix and fingers crossed all of the upgrades arrive 
Now, unfortunately, it looks like we are going to have to repurchase the rear downforce upgrade for the Halo. Looks like it failed, so we're going to go ahead and get that on the car. It should still arrive before Baku, so we should have a double upgrade on the car for the next race. Elsewhere, the fuel um, efficiency upgrade did arrive, so that's something, you know, for this race. But either way, yeah, there is your kind of overview of the upgrades and yeah two more in the works and hopefully we can try and you know make some more strides heading into the mid part of the season but guys if you enjoyed today's episode then leave a like let's try and hit 1200 likes on this one subscribe for more daily f1 content we're on the way to 60,000, so any help would be massively appreciated guys and as always thank you to the members of the channel for supporting and finally check out the two videos on screen if you have missed them but that is it from me here today and i'll see you guys next time